is Dr. Bond and we're going to talk about the electron transport chain and chemical osmosis in this series. So we have CoQH2. As we know, one electron goes to an iron sulfur, goes to cytochrome C1, to cytochrome C2 complex 4. That's the direct route. Okay, the other, this is a one, the other electron is going to go this route. So we have cytochrome, it's going to go to cytochrome B, L, cytochrome BH, to what is known as the Q pool. In this Q pool, we just have an abundance of coenzyme Qs that are the oxidized form, and it is going to be picking up hydrogens from the matrix and one electron at a time from cytochrome BH and when it does it's going to become the reduced form. Okay, so this is what this other electron does. It is going to be cycling in this Q pool. Okay, this is known as the Q cycle. The reason why the Q cycle has to occur is because this guy can only take one electron at a time. So the other electron, here's the path, you know they come in pairs. Um, up until this point, we're dealing with two electrons moving. At this point, we have one electron going to the Q cycle and the other electron going into complex four. Okay, we are being dropped off by cytochrome C, the reduced. Okay, so complex four. Cytochrome oxidase. Um, so this is a mobile and it faces the matrix. So if this is our lipid bilayer of the inner mitochondrial membrane, this guy is going to be more associated with that. Uh, it's closely associated with the inner membrane, but it's almost in the matrix. Anyway, so it's going to be dropping off at complex four. Who accepts it is cytochrome A. So cytochrome A will become reduced. Then we have copper. Okay, so copper instead of iron will be an electron carrier, or I would say a cofactor in this case. Here we have cytochrome A3 is going to be the next electron carrier, the next redox reaction. And from here, we're going to get some hydrogens from the matrix, specifically two, and we're going to be forming water. So here, oxygen is our final electron acceptor. So oxygen, final electron acceptor. We can assign a voltage to each one of these redox reactions and we call that the reduction potential. And ultimately what it means is that this oxygen is going to be pulling the electrons towards it um, through all, even though the electrons will lose energy at each redox reaction, ultimately oxygen is right here at the end to accept it and become water. The water is dumped into the matrix. So it goes into the matrix. So that is the completion of our electron transport chain. Here this was a proton pump setting up that electrochemical gradient for the next uh, set of reactions. They're actually phosphorylations. This is a coupled system. We have the electron transport system and then the next one which is chemiosmosis, which we will discuss now. Let's look at what has happened in summary. So the big points of the electron transport system before we go on, complex one is NADH coenzyme Q oxidoreductase. Um, that is some thunder right there. Okay, that is that is lightning. That is that. Okay. Um, so here we have oxidoreductase um, complex. One, we have NAD drops off two electrons each time. This is a proton pump. 
setting up our chemical gradient, electrochemical gradient that we will need for the next set of reactions uh, done by ATP synthase. Uh, complex two. His known is succinate. Coenzyme Q, oxidoreductase. This we had from the citric acid cycle of the reaction succinate to fumarate. We reduce FAD. FAD stays in the inner mitochondrial membrane and simply just hands over the electrons to the iron sulfur complex, which holds uh, hands off to uh, coenzyme Q. Both of these reactions give to coenzyme Q electron carrier. Okay. Coenzyme Q, we had drop off at complex three. One electron goes towards, we'll say, cytochrome C1. One electron goes to the Q cycle. Okay. Anyway, it goes to the iron and then to the cytochrome C1 and then to cytochrome C and then to the Q cycle. Okay, we don't need to go over that again. This one is a proton pump. And let's see, this one, I, I don't think I've mentioned this before, CoQH2, coenzyme QH2, cytochrome C, oxidoreductase is the name of complex three, complex four, we are proton pump, we're called cytochrome oxidase, which is the last complex when we produce water. Okay, so those are our four complexes of the um, electron transport chain. Another one I should me uh, mention is that we had a mobile carrier here too that went from complex three to four and that is cytochrome C. Again, this one's associated more closely with the matrix. All right, that's it move on to the next step. Of course, let's go over this. The PO ratio, you might see this in some of the literature. Okay, so we have moles of inorganic phosphate. This should be an inorganic sign. Um, over the moles of oxygen consumed. If we were to calculate the PO of NADH, will um, give us 2.5 ATP. PO of the reduced fat will give us only 1.5 ATPs, and the primary reason for that is we drop off at complex two, we drop off at complex one. Complex one was a proton pump, so we end up getting more ATP. Synthase enzyme, synthase enzyme, as I discussed before, because it's not a synthetase, it will be building things, and we know in chemistry if you build, it takes energy. But a synthetase needs to break a bond, an anhydride bond between two phosphates. A synthase enzyme can use the energy from somewhere else. In this case, we're going to be using the energy from the proton gradient that we have set up. So let's draw. What I'm going to draw specifically is the inner membrane space. So here, nobody said I could draw very good. Just know that what we're looking at is a lipid bilayer. This is a lipid bilayer. I don't want to draw it all out because it'll make it all messy. Okay, so this is the inner membrane. This is the inner membrane. This is a matrix. So I just want you to know where we're at. Inter membrane space, outer mitochondrial membrane. And this would be the cell cytosol or cytoplasm, whatever your flavor, whatever you like to say. Just the difference between cytosol and cytoplasm is that if you say plasm, you're talking about the cytosol with all the organelles dissolved in it. The cytosol is just the fluid, the fluid matrix. Okay. So here we are in the inner membrane space. What we know from the ETS is that we had complex, complex one, two, three, four, and what they've done. So this is one, two, three, four, and what they've done is they've pumped hydrogen ions 
into this inner membrane space where we have a ton of them. Okay, so we have a high concentration of hydrogen ions, and then we have a lower concentration of hydrogen ions. Therefore, this means a lower pH. So this is a pH gradient as well, and a higher pH in the matrix. Okay, so we have this electrochemical gradient. Again, this is an electrochemical gradient, and that is potential energy. What can we do with it? We have an enzyme known as ATP synthase. And what it will be doing, I'm gonna simplify it a little bit here. There's a lot of subunits here. We won't bother with going over each one of them. But do know that the FO subunit or portion is going to be containing an ion channel. Of course, that's gonna continue because they're going to be pumping through. So here is where hydrogens can actually flow. There'll be no other hydrogen ion channels in this um, inner membrane, because if there were, then this enzyme here, let me be clear what this is, would be unable to use or harness this energy um, in this proton gradient. All right, so here we have a hydrogen ion. It is going to travel down this channel. When it does, it is going to be moving. There's like little molecular motors here, and this is basically turning. Every time the, um, these hydrogen ions flow through this channel, it turns this enzyme, and it gives it the energy it needs to drive this reaction. We are going to be creating a bunch of ATPs that are going to be dumped in the matrix. And I'm about to go over the numbers with you. But to simplify this, there's going to be um, three conformational states. We have L, T, and an O. These are the three different shapes that this F1 unit will undergo. The loose is going to be binding substrate. Okay, so the ADP and the, A and the inorganic phosphate will come in at the loose um, conformation. Then we have the taut, this is the, this is where the magic happens. So this is gonna happen in the T conformation, okay? Then the open releases ATP, okay? To the matrix specifically. All right, let's sum up some stuff about what happens. Let's go over the yield. Like, what energy do we get from glucose oxidation? And let's make an, a handy little chart. So here we have the pathway ATP, NADH, and FADH2. So let me write the pathway in red. First we're gonna talk about glycolysis. We had two steps in glycolysis that we needed energy, steps one and three. Remember, there's 10 steps in glycolysis. So we had step one and three. We actually had to phosphorylate. Phosphorylate, okay. So I'm gonna say minus two there. Okay, so we lost ATPs in glycolysis. And then we dephosphorylated and we ended up getting plus four. So the yield, remember from glycolysis, was a plus two of ATP. And we also got um, an oxidation step when we oxidized glyceraldehyde three phosphates um, that we got here. That is a plus two of NADH, so that's glycolysis. Okay, then we have pyruvate oxidation. Pyruvate oxidation and we gain two reduced NADs 
Then we had the citric acid cycle. We had two, two GDPs, which we know we can turn into ATPs. Then we had oxidation steps. And as we know, we had two terms in the citric acid cycle per molecule of glucose is what we're talking about. So with two terms, we got, let's just do this, plus six and plus two. Okay, you can go back and look at it and trace the steps. So for each turn, we got half of that. Okay, remember for every glucose molecule, we have two molecules of pyruvate, which we had two molecules of acetyl-CoA, and each molecule of acetyl-CoA will give us plus three and plus one, but because each glucose has two, we multiplied it by two. Then we had oxidative phosphorylation. Now we're talking about these, okay, so we had two NADH from glycolysis. Okay, if you remember, that would be a plus five ATP and a minus two NADH. Okay, from the pyruvate oxidation, we had two from pyruvate oxidation. So that's gonna be another plus five minus two. Okay, from the citric acid cycle, we had two FADH2 from the citric acid cycle. So we're gonna say plus three and a minus two. Here we have six NADH from the citric acid cycle. Here we have plus 15. Remember the PO ratio? The PO ratio, we get 1.5 FAD, or 1.5 ATVs for each molecule of FAD. So it's just two times 1.5 is three. 6 uh, times 2.5 is 15. Okay, so here we have minus 6. We should end up with 0 here. And if we added this up, 32 plus 32 ATPs. So that is it for uh, glucose oxidation uh, for aerobic respiration. Um, so it, this is a complete oxidation. Why won't the second